Hi, I'm Megan Nielsen. The other day when I was tidying up the back cupboard in the studio, I found something at the top of the cupboard. This box. And it's probably the nightmare of anyone who sews because it's an entire box labelled Mending and Whip. There's nothing worse or that I hate more than finding half-finished projects that I know I have to finish. I've been kind of putting off opening this box and finding out what's in it, so I thought to make it a little bit more fun, I might take you guys along for the ride and find out what is in my mystery box of Mending and Whip that's been sitting in the top of the studio cupboard for, I don't know, how many years. So, let's have a look inside. Whew. Okay. So, right away, oh yeah, so <laughs> this is a pair of half a short or half a skort that I made for myself back when we were testing the pattern. I really loved this pair, but then one day my husband being a very kind man and he has decided to do the laundry and didn't realize that these shorts were made from wool and they shrunk terribly. So these are currently at least a size, if not two sizes too small for me. So. I'm guessing they're in this box because I didn't want to throw them away, but I might see if they fit my eldest daughter. Maybe I'll just keep them a little bit longer and just have a look. Okay, so next thing that's in here is this bag. Okay, so when I was in high school, we had sewing lessons at school, which I'm sure everyone did. And our first project was to make a notions bag. And um, I remember getting really excited because I had this like puffy fabric glue and I Remember spending ages writing my name on it. What is inside here? Oh, okay. Oh, charming. Okay, so what we have in here is actually a sewing project from when I was in high school, which I guess is a skirt that has, I think this is poplin at the top and this looks like some sort of satin and I think this was the lame. I don't really know what's going on. There's no waistband and it seems like I've cut a chunk out the back. So I don't think this is a thing I'm going to wear. So I think maybe this might go in my like fabric scrap recycling box. Goodbye to you. And what else is in here? Oh, okay, this is just piles of scraps of fabric. Okay, so I've got bits of... So this must be leftover from when I was a teenager, I decided to enter a fashion design competition called the Apex Teenage Fashion Design Awards. You had to design your own outfits, sew the whole thing yourself, and then like model it on a catwalk. So I got through the regionals, through to the state finals, but which point I did not win. And to be honest, really didn't deserve to win because I made a medieval inspired ball gown that had collots underneath and was made from silver lame and this kind of this satin what color would you call that periwinkle blue maybe so i'm guessing this is all the scraps from that so maybe time to say goodbye to those or maybe i could use some of this poplin in masks that i'm making for my kids because they have to go to master school but i'm going to keep this little bag because that is nostalgic and special. I might give it a little bit of a wash and then use it for something else. Okay, so <laughs> these are, any mom will probably know that these are toilet training underpants. I don't know why these are in this box. Maybe I was going to make some of my own and like cut them up and use them as a pattern to make some more toilet training underpants. I definitely don't need those anymore. So I think that's gonna go in a donation bin. Okay, all right, so this is really cool. So a couple of years ago, I did a quilting project for my mum. So my mum found all of these amazing quilt blocks that my Oma had made, and they were all quilt blocks of candle wicking, which is a kind of embroidery. And so I spent months carefully going through all of the blocks and cutting out consistently sized pieces and kind of piecing it all together into like a really special quilt which my mum now uses all the time and I just think that's really special because she doesn't have a lot of things left from her mum. So I think these are all of the scraps from that project because I'm a hoarder and I suppose I nostalgically couldn't get rid of all the pieces and I wonder if there's something else in here that I could use. So there's kind of some interesting pieces left here. All right, so I don't really know what I would do with this one, but we've got what look like ducks or geese and pineapples. I don't know if you can see that. Quite a lot of ducks and geese and pineapples, which is a, it's an interesting combination. I'm not sure what to do with that, but my own mind is. So I'm gonna keep that and figure out what to do with the ducks and geese and pineapples. Put you to the side in the keep pile. And then I've got all these like little pieces. So I've got a couple of little pieces like this that I'm obviously just gonna keep hoarding for the rest of my life until I can find a project to use for 
to them. I'm actually really tempted to take the rest of these little pieces. Some of them have got stains on them and things like that. I'm really tempted to take them and maybe do a little quilted cushion or something for my mum to use that uses the leftover bits of candle wicking that I didn't use in the quilt. All right, so, oh, this is, <laughs> all right. So the terrible thing, I wonder if there's any more in here. The terrible thing about going through a like whip or mending box is just finding the kind of like a graveyard of all of your failed projects and your lack of follow through. So a bit of a change of scenery. My battery ran out on my camera, so I had to bring it home to charge it, and I figured I'll just bring the whole box home and finish filming from my home office. Welcome to my home office. So, what was I pulling out? So these are a um, little collection of bean bags that I was trying to make my kids when they were toddlers. And when I say my kids, I mean my eldest two kids who are currently 13 and 12. So they're obviously very far from being toddlers. And my idea behind these was to make them some cute little letter bean bags that had the uppercase letter on one side and the lowercase letter on the other side. And I thought they'd be really cute to play with and a fun way to use up all my scraps. Evidently I did not get very far. So here I've got a bag of little beans that you can use for bean, these little bean bags, little weighted plastic beans. I have the letter A. I have B. I don't know if that's Z or N. Z or N? T, which is a bit, looks like it's covered in T. B again, I. And then I've got a bunch of scraps where I obviously started doing the letters on there. I actually really loved this project and I'm really sad that I never finished it because I always wanted to. I really wish that I had, but if I'm being really realistic, I'm never going to finish this because my kids are much too old for letter bean bags. I'm really tempted to just put everything in the little plastic bag full of bean bags and just hold it for like a tiny bit longer in case I get some motivation to actually finish this project. Kind of hope I do. Okay, let's pack that up. Okay, what else is in this box? Okay, so I had this habit 10 years ago, so this is May 2012, and it's currently May 2022, where I would write down what the project was that I wanted to do, fabric, where I'd gotten to so far, and I was trying to be really organized and have a plan for all my half completed projects, but as you can probably see, actually finished it and it's still in a plastic bag so this is some raw silk to make cushion covers which I never actually finished. I think my tastes have changed <laughs> over time and I don't really like this fabric anymore so I don't think that I'm going to make these cushion covers. What else have I got in here? I've got a bag of pretty scraps. So when I write up scraps I like to keep them for different projects. If you watch any of my other videos then you probably notice that I really love finding ways to use up old scraps. I have a couple of different ways of organizing them. Sometimes I organize them by fabric type, sometimes I organize them by color, sometimes I organize them as a kind of a mini collection, like if I think they look really cute together. These fabrics all look like leftovers from a scrap quilt that I made probably about nine or ten years ago. It was all scrap fabrics from my first clothing line collection back in 2010, 2009. So I guess that's how long I've been keeping these scraps. But to be honest, I haven't used them since then. I'm probably not gonna use them now. So I think these will go in my fabric scrap bin to be recycled. Another bag of tiny scraps. Don't know why I have so many bags of fabric scraps. We have an old silk shirt, which I'm guessing has mending required. I have a very large mending pile which I guess I'll put this into, in the hope that at some point I get some motivation to do some mending. This looks like another bag of scraps from a past collection. So when I first started my brand, I started with a small clothing line. I did two seasons a year for two to three years before I started manufacturing sewing patterns. So this was from one of those collections. I really loved this rayon and it had like these really beautiful little butterflies and flowers all over it. I really, really love that. This green linen is still one of my favorites and I've actually used really similar colors to this in some of my sewing pattern samples. So obviously it's just remained a favorite color of mine. This actually looks like a half finished skirt. This is a half finished skirt. This is a half finished skirt. Okay. So I have here a half finished skirt for, this looks like a hack of my Kelly sewing pattern, which is 
for a really simple beginner pleated skirt. The Kelly sewing pattern has a pleated version on the pleats on the front and the back or gathers on the front and the back. This skirt has darts so I think I was doing a I must have been photographing a tutorial and doing a hack on how to make darts instead of pleats and then I never finished it so realistic Meg knows I probably still won't finish it and if I'm really honest with myself if this is from 10 years ago like a lot of these things are the chances of it fitting are slim to none. So that's going to go in fabric scrap pile as well. What is this? This is a, another cutout project. This looks like the beginning of a little shirt. These are very long straps. So I think this is actually for one of those little toddler shirts where the shoulders overlap so that you can get their giant adorable toddler heads through the head hole. I won't be finishing that because I don't have any toddlers. So that's also going in the fabric scrap pile. I think I ordered this one because it's a really incredible like tie-dyed silk. I would actually really love to use those scraps again so that I'm going to put in the scrap pile as well. I'm starting to see that this box is going to go from being a box full of half-finished projects that I didn't know what it was to a box of half-finished projects again except that I'll know what's inside. A pair of toddler track pants that must require mending I don't know why they're there, but they actually look okay. So I'm going to check if they're okay. I don't know why they're in there. If they are okay, I will donate them. If they're not, I'll mend them. Before. This must also require mending. This is a blouse of my mom's. It was one of her favorites, obviously, a long time ago because I've had it the whole time. So I think this one also requires mending. She must have been waiting for me to do something. Sorry, mom. I love you. Oh, okay. So this is actually a little baby dress from when I was a baby. My mom must have given it to me so that I could trace it and make another one for either my eldest bunny or my youngest birdie when they were little toddlers. It's obviously not going to fit either of them now because birdie is 8 and bunny is 13 but I will keep this because it's special to me. Just random navy jersey. I might check if any of that is useful for the kids. My girls especially like to wear little legging shorts. I make them mini Virginia legging shorts. Birdie's school uniform is blue plaid, so I always make her little navy blue shorts to go under her dress so that she can, you know, do cartwheels and handstands and be awesome. Oh, okay, so this bag is a pile of sparkly dance fabric, spotty tulle, and poly satin. And this is from when I made Bunny a frozen Elsa costume. You know the dress where she's like, let it go, like that. Here's the, the scrap fabric from that. I'm not going to use that again. I think I've made all the Elsa and Anna costumes that I'm ever going to make for my entire life. A t-shirt? I don't know why that's in this box because it looks like a perfectly good t-shirt that my son cannot wear. Maybe he didn't like it and that's why I put it in the box. That can be donated though because that is a perfectly good t-shirt. Getting to the bottom of the box, I'm almost there. Okay, the next one is the one I was actually most excited to find. So this is a quilt that I made a couple of years ago. Remember I mentioned before that I like to save my scraps from special things and use them to make quilts. This is actually the collection scrap quilt from my second clothing line collection, I believe. And this is the one that was the most important to me because it's where my brand really took off when it was a clothing line and gained the most momentum and it was a really exciting time for me so I kept all of the scraps for this quilt and I made a quilt out of it. I just said quilt a lot of times just then. Unfortunately I am not a very experienced quilter or at least I wasn't when I made this quilt and I just didn't realize or think through the fact that putting a sand washed silk that it wasn't really going to play nice. And so what happened was all of the silk flying geese actually ripped away from the quilt, which was just really tragic and heartbreaking. And in my stupidity, I tried to fix it by just zigzagging over the seams, thinking, oh, that'll give it some strength. And it just, it, it looks like rubbish and it continued to rip. So I've kept it all these years because what I want to do is actually unpick the whole thing and it actually looks like I started unpicking it because there's some of the binding unpicked. But what I really want to do is unpick it. I've got a linen that is the same color as this that I've been hoarding for ages with the intent of recutting all of the salmon pink 
flying geese and replacing them. So this is one of those mending projects that's just really dear to my heart and I really desperately want to do. So I'm just hoping I push on through because it's really time consuming to unpick a entire quilt, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to give it a go because I really love this quilt. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a peek at what it looks like. Can you see that? Ah. <laughs> what else is in here? Oh, remember I was talking about those project bags before? So this is a dress. Oh, I've got more fluff on me. I've got so much fluff on me from this box. This is a dress that um, I bought, I believe, when my husband and I were first married, and I really loved it. And it was when all those like super peasanty, floaty tear dresses were in fashion, which is actually not too different to now, except that this dress had to go over your head and yet was fitted. And I loved the print and the style, so I bought it anyway with the intention of putting a zip in the side which I never did, and I'm probably never gonna do. But considering it's a complete, fully functional dress that someone else can use, I'm gonna put it in the donut pile. Oh, this is so adorable. Okay, so when my youngest birdie was a baby, I made her this little, I can't believe how itty bitty she was, she was such a tiny little thing. I made her these little romper, or little um, bloomer overalls maybe, that's a better way of saying it. I don't really know what you call this garment. And she was Rosie the Riveter, so she had like a little headband that looked like a scarf and a little little top underneath, and it was so cute. Put this in a special box, maybe for when um, Birdie grows up and has kids maybe one day. Is that too haughty? Again, some more bag fabric scraps, which I don't really use silk chiffon anymore in any of my sewing because, you know, three kids. I think this will go in my fabric recycling box. Salmon. Linen that I was telling you that I have been hoarding for this quilt. So this is much more um, sturdy. I think that's going to be a better option for this quilt. So I'll put these two together. That was actually really nice. I have more of it hoarded in my cupboard. So obviously I've just been, every time I have salmon linen, I'm just putting it aside for this quilt. I probably have enough salmon linen to make a salmon linen quilt on its own. Very last thing in here is another bag, again, of fabric scraps from that quilt as well. So these are the pieces that didn't make it into that quilt. I think it's time I said goodbye to them. They're really tiny pieces. This one is a denim and this one is a rayon. And I'm not going to use them again if I'm honest. All right, great. So I've got a couple piles here. I've got some things that are nostalgic that I need to put in special boxes to keep for my kids. There are some things that I need to use in future projects. I've got some quilting to do for myself and also for my mum. I've got quite a few things that need to be donated because they are still in good condition but don't fit. And then I've got a ton of fabric scraps that I was just hoarding and probably need to go in my fabric recycling bin as much as I would like to keep all the fabric scraps in the entire world. I think it's time to say goodbye. Well, that brings me to the bottom of my mending and whip box. I feel so much calmer and more in control now that I know what was in there. I have an action plan for all of the items and everything that's going back in here has a purpose now and I will be getting rid of a lot of things. There are a couple of projects that I'm really excited to start on. The quilting ones, I think, are the ones that excite me the most because they have a nostalgic element to them. So I think those are gonna to go to the top of the box now and be the next things I tackle. I really hope you enjoyed coming along with me on the journey of discovering what was in my mending and whip box. And I hope to see you next time.